Hi guys, it's Skinboot here, and today what I'm going to be bringing you guys is episode 2 of This Week in No Man's Sky, even though uh, it hasn't been a week, it's been like fucking two weeks or something mad like that, probably longer right now, I don't even remember when I did the first episode, but that's not the point. Basically, the idea of this series is I talk about some of the events in the No Man's Sky community that have happened around this week, or some, you know, kind of new and current, sort of on-topic um, conversations or debates or news, anything like that, anything relating to No Man's Sky that is somewhat current, I basically give my informal opinion on it, almost like a podcast kind of, uh, I don't know, video or radio broadcast, something to put in the background while you say play No Man's Sky or, I don't know, maybe if you're just lounging around, it's something to listen to. I hope it's going to be quite relaxing and uh, if you haven't seen the first episode, it will be in the description of the video, but as you can tell, there is no auditory editing. This is... Um, raw footage of just me talking into a mic, no fancy gimmicks, no Gaussian blur, <laughs> nothing like that. We're just going to be talking um, as they would on the radio or, or where have you. But anyway, that's enough with the introduction. So today in uh, this episode, there isn't a great deal to actually cover. However, the two massive things which I do want to touch on um, are arguably very very big they're very current and as always i want to give my sort of opinions on it all of that kind of stuff um so first up we have a a fairly serious topic which i want to talk about and i have to be careful how i approach this obviously because i am um i like to think well acquainted with the person but this is kind of um I don't want to say old news, that sounds extremely disrespectful, but this did happen a, a bit of time ago now. Uh, so this isn't really this week, but it's ongoing and I want to touch on it. And that is the whole Cobra TV um, car accident. And I don't know if you guys have heard about this. I would imagine that you have, but essentially, I think about, um, I want to say about five days ago, I could be wrong. Cobra TV and I believe his um, wife, correct me if I'm wrong, got into a car accident in real life and he is, I believe, still in hospital. He may have been discharged, but he was, you know, severely hurt. He's okay, but um, it was a, a particularly nasty crash. He's been kind of updating us on Twitter. There's been a couple photos of him in, in the bed with we you know all the bandages on him and stuff like that and uh at the moment there is a a lot of support for him so i'm not here to deliver a whole story on how this happened and you know how it can be prevented or, or anything that's you know even the tiniest bit disrespectful for one moment i actually want to kind of take a formal stance and say i actually hope that cobra gets well obviously cobra is I would say that the leader of this this community as such I've had conversations with him I've been on his subcasts I've become well acquainted with him and although I don't necessarily watch his content because I, I don't watch No Man's Sky content as someone that makes it I find it hard to watch it in a weird kind of um, I love myself way which isn't what it is but it kind of comes across like that but I don't necessarily watch Cobra however I have so much respect for him in terms of not only his, you know, subscriber goal on, on YouTube, where he, I believe he still has about 30k subs, and that's a lot of subs for a No Man's Sky community, but he also does other games, he's a big figurehead of the community, and um, he's a lovely bloke, so this has happened, and he is mending, and I just want to say that he does have links to donate to his Patreon, um, all these kind of support links to, I don't know, give him a little bit of money to help with his um, situation, or there are some things which you can do like, I don't know, tweet at him saying, I hope you get well. There is stuff which we can do to let him know that we are in support of him, because this is something which I would not wish upon anyone. It's a complete shock and... When I saw it, I was, you know, sort of in disbelief a little bit. I think a lot of people 
see all of these these serious accidents and these um you know real world problems and just assume that it's never going to affect them or affect them close to home and I'm quite lucky in that aspect I've never had anything too similar but when you see that actually happen with not necessarily a friend or a relative but someone you know of and someone you like to think you're kind of acquainted with it does of course hit home that shit this can happen to anyone so I just want to give like a little statement saying you know reach out to Cobra tweet at him or I don't know send him um, a letter or something like that maybe even donate to his patreon if you're feeling extra generous but Cobra is um, he's a good guy and he does not deserve this. So I I hope he you know mends well. I hope he can come back when he's feeling a lot better and you know make some lovely videos for his community. But he doesn't have access to a computer, I believe. He still has access to his phone, so he can tweet, but um, he can't make videos. And he <laughs> this this is why I love Cobra so much. Even though he was in. A fairly serious car accident he still apologizes on Twitter for not uploading and that is something which I think is just it's so respectable that that is his kind of priority and that's what he's worried about over you know the fact that he's crashed his car I find that you know slightly humorous but also just such a Cobra trait I, I can't get over that um, so yeah Cobra get well mate I know that um, a lot of people in the community are, are wishing for you to mend up and take your time, take as much time as you need. Obviously, no one is banking on you coming back anytime soon because I don't think anyone could after what you've been through. But, you know, all the best, Cobra. And um, as I said, support him. Please do, because he's lovely. The second thing which I want to talk about is um, more related to No Man's Sky, and that is the Abyss update. So... <clears throat> I touched on this in a whole video, basically going through the patch notes. And yes, I know the video was late, okay? I'm well aware of that. But you have to remember that I am in full-time employment. And when this news got announced, I was on my break at work, actually. In fact, I was in the fucking toilet. And I saw uh, a notification come up from Sean Murray. I have it on Twitter where every time Hello Games or Sean Murray tweets... It notifies me so I can go straight to their tweet and not miss out on news and stuff like that. So I got a notification saying, yeah, Sean Murray just tweeted um, the little summoning emoji. And I was like, oh, fuck, it's kicking off and I'm at work and I can't do shit about it. So when I got home, I um, I started preparing a script. And bearing in mind, this was during the Halloween period. And if you guys don't know, I work at a theme park. Can't disclose what one. But essentially during Halloween, the park closing times are extended. So instead of shutting at, say, 5 or 6, it shuts at 8. Um, you can work out probably what park that is, but I'm not going to say it. And this means that because I have to do things like paperwork and, you know, closing, you know, mopping, stuff like that. I'm sometimes not out until, like, 9 o'clock. Um, one time... I got out at something fucking crazy, like half 10 in the evening, which is mental, which is well over a 12 hour shift. So this happened and um, I got home probably, I think about nine, half nine. And I um, I started typing a script and I was going to stay up all night and record and edit and stuff like that. But I was so goddamn tired for work. I was like, I'll do it tomorrow. But um, obviously I've worked the next day, so I had to edit it. And yeah, you get the idea. So that's why I'm I'm not quite on time as I used to be because I'm working. Uh, but when I have my days off, that's when I dedicate time to YouTube. Apart from the first day, that's when I just recuperate and try and fucking get out of the work mindset. But yeah, the Abyss update. Um, so this update, as I said, is the first titled update since next. So... This is important. It means Hello Games believes it's significant enough to give it a proper name. You know, before this, when we had the Exocraft updates, it didn't even have a title. It was simply one point, you know, six, whatever, six, eight or six, nine, something like that. And um, now that we have this title for the update and it's officially branded as 1.7, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely 1.7 or it might not be. I don't even remember. But now that we have this Abyss update, which is called the abyss update 
it signifies the next step in No Man's Sky's journey. And this was the first major update since next in Hello Games' world. So this update focuses, as I'm sure you know, on the underwater aspect of No Man's Sky. The update aimed to kind of fix this issue with underwater being too boring or too samey or just pointless. There's sort of no point to going in water, you know, before the Abyss update. You could catalogue a couple of fucking fish, maybe scan a rock, and that was about it. There was no incentive. There was nothing to discover aside from plants and animals. That's it. I suppose you could say that for the rest of No Man's Sky, but um, there was really no incentive. There was no context. There was no reason to go into water other than to, say, catalog all the animals on a certain planet that was about it but this update aims to fix that we now have stuff like crash freighters underwater uh we have crash ships underwater we got whole new missions ruins excavation missions uh better ai for fish more varied fish deep sea creatures abysmal or whether abyss horrors abysmal horrors i can't remember what they're called the big eye things so there are a load of improvements to underwater as I'm sure you know, and if you've played it, you can see an instant difference. Underwater isn't so bare and lifeless and kind of empty feeling. It now has a bit more substance to it. Trust me, it's far from perfect. I saw in the patch notes Hello Games was saying something about how there's basically always fish. So you'll never really find a patch where the fish aren't spawning or fish are only staying in one place. But I've seen that already. I've already seen the... The standard kind of behavior of fish going in groups and not really moving around so it's not perfect there's definitely more that can be done but as a first step it's a really really good first move and i can't really comment on the quality of the abyss update mainly because i just simply haven't had time to play no man's sky that gameplay you saw in the back of the um in the video which i made recently i simply hopped into a creative save found a water planet and hit record and then closed the game and edited it. I don't play No Man's Sky that much. And I don't know if this is because of work. I don't know if this is because of Red Dead 2 <laughs> or, or just a changing interest. But I have periods of time where I love No Man's Sky and I can grind it for hours and I get really into it and I go to bed and I'm thinking about it. And there's other periods of time where I just think it's fucking boring. I, I'm going to be honest here. And I think this is with a lot of people, you go on and off games quite a lot, you go on and off films and, and TV shows, so this isn't necessarily saying that the game is shit, but I'm saying I, I don't play No Man's Sky really outside of editing, I don't play it for fun. There's a lot of reasons to this, Um, I think one of the biggest reasons is that it always feels like a waste, it feels like a waste if I'm simply playing and not recording, or not you know, getting footage for something or conjuring up an idea for a video or some shit like that. I can't just kick back and play and not worry about YouTube. I don't know if a lot of people feel that. I know that some people don't have that at all. You know, like COD YouTubers can happily just play COD without thinking about, oh, I need to be recording this. Like, what if this gameplay is really sick? Things like that. And I guess it depends on the person. But for me, that's one of the biggest reasons why I just can't kick back and play. The second reason is the fact I simply don't have enough time. I'm a busy man now, and I don't have a lot of time to just sit back and, and play games. I'm either at work, I'm recording, or I don't know, I'm reading, or I'm going out drinking, some shit like that. I don't really have that kind of um, nostalgic, kind of childhood obsession with video games anymore. This is going really off topic, but this is kind of what I'm aiming for. Um, you know, when I was younger, I I always had this weird kind of obsession with games. I think a lot of people had this as well. But I would feel almost lost or a bit, I don't know, down if I didn't play a game. This was very prevalent with the Xbox 360. I think that was probably the the kind of worse it was i say worse like it was some kind of addiction it wasn't but when you're younger you give that your all you don't really have anything else to do other than go to school maybe go around a friend's house and watch fucking wwe or some shit or play xbox 
there isn't a lot you can do. And I think it is a very kind of nostalgic childhood thing, playing video games. And as I said, I used to have it where there were days where I might not have played um, the Xbox and I would feel kind of like out of place, almost uncomfortable and a bit sort of, I can't explain it, like there was something missing. And I don't think that's necessarily a, a bad thing. I think that's just, you know, your way of escaping. But I don't have that anymore. I don't have that at all. And I think that's simply because I've grown up. And like a lot of people, you kind of realise that sitting on your ass and playing Minecraft for 12 hours a day isn't very beneficial. And more importantly, you just get bored of it quickly. And again, I don't know if this is an age thing, but even when I'm playing Red Dead 2, I, I can't play it for more than like an hour. I'm playing it and then before you know it, I'm sort of just wandering around or looking at the sky like I'm, I'm sort of bored of this and I'll go off and I don't know, make a tea, go for a cigarette or something. You know, I, I can't just sit for hours and play. I don't know, as I said, if that's an age thing or if that's just me changing my interests or maybe it's my routine. Maybe it's the fact that all I do is fucking work, that if I'm not doing something productive, I feel a bit useless. But um, I completely forgot what I was talking about. Um, no Man's Sky, yeah. So back to back to the Abyss update. I, I haven't played it a lot, so I can't really comment on the quality. But the one thing which I will bring up, and I think some people are, would also probably agree with me here, is the fact that I don't see why Hello Games went with an underwater-focused update when there is so much more they could do. And I say this because... Fucking hell. That's what happens when you talk and vape, it kills. Um, that's because there is still so much more they can do on land. There's so much more they can do with planets. I don't understand why underwater was their next logical step. We saw in that survey that they had loads of other options like the variety, you know, improving animals even more, um, sound design, better multiplayer shit like that. I don't know why the underwater was chosen over them. This is something which I, I can't really understand. Maybe it's because that's the biggest part that's lacking. I mean, Hello Games have focused massively on basically improving every single aspect of the game. You know, they started with base building, which was massively revamped with Next. Multiplayer, which was completely, you know, overhauled from 1.3. Storytelling, um, you know, all of that social aspect as well with the... Um, gestures and stuff like that and of course just planet variety third person the better graphics tessellation ring planets they they kind of have like a checklist it's almost like they have a whiteboard and they're like right these are the areas of the game that are shit these are the ones we need to improve and they're sort of crossing them off so they've crossed off i don't know planet variety done that animals yeah we've done that underwater ah we haven't done that so they circle it big fat fucking permanent sharpie on that and that's why I guess they focused on it for this update, because it's the one thing that is lacking. But um, if I'm going to be completely honest here, and I just want to sit back and, and just tell you this straight up. I don't really get excited by the Abyss update. I think it's very good for those who are really into No Man's Sky. But for someone that picks it up occasionally and has like a little sesh... It's not big enough for me to really notice or appreciate. Mainly because underwater isn't something that's always there. And I feel like even getting footage of the video, I had to kind of search. And I'm not trying to state this needs to be force fed to me. But I'm saying as someone that isn't really like balls deep in No Man's Sky, it doesn't affect my experience that much. And... I'm not by any means saying that the Abyss update is shit. I'm simply saying I would have preferred for this update for 1.7 to focus on something else. I'm thinking maybe like, um, I don't know, it could be anything, uh, predators or something. Something that's more prevalent, something that is, you know, going to affect your gameplay much more. The one I'm still ra uh, rating on, fuck me, the one I'm still waiting on is um, Planetary Rotation. I'm still waiting for that. I know a lot of people go, oh, it wouldn't work in the game, the engine's too unstable, blah, blah, blah. No, I think that would really help. These are the kind of like small but really big.
big famous cut features which I think they should have focused on more and I know I'm coming across like I'm ungrateful I'm not in fact my brief time with the abyss update has been really really cool but I think I speak for a fair amount of people here when I say that it seems like a bit of a strange direction I understand why they did it but I think that the abyss update should have been further down the line I think they could have done an underwater update in a few months time and no one really would have you know got upset about it if they had released 1.7 and it's like this massive variety overhaul and they're like you know adding all these crazy aesthetic things and colors and all of the shit people talk about then people would sort of forget about underwater and i guess yeah it would make you realize that underwater was shitter but then it would make sense to improve it for afterwards like I, I i don't understand how game development works but just from a consumer perspective and as a member of the community underwater and the abyss update doesn't really excite me I'm, I'm just gonna say it straight up it's cool and it's definitely necessary but i personally would have preferred something something else i guess you could say but don't dislike <laughs> don't dislike the video just because i said that that, that's my honest truth, and I, I don't want to bullshit you. I, I just want to be honest about it. Sorry, I've just got to keep doing that. Um, so, yeah, those are the two kind of big things which I wanted to talk about for this video. Not a lot has happened aside from the Abyss update and the Cobra TV incident. Um, the only other thing which I can think of which is not related to No Man's Sky at all is Red Dead 2 And I don't know if I want to start talking about that But yeah, I've been playing that a shit ton That's probably why I haven't really made that many videos because I've been playing it But um, yeah guys, I, I hope you enjoyed this episode I know that this was perhaps a little bit different from the first one This is probably slightly less professional But I don't know if you like that I don't know if this was not as good as the first one what have you let me know let me know what i can improve on because of course this is a completely new thing to me and this is out of my usual style my usual comfort zone so you know i'm i'm still learning how to do this kind of style of video so let me know how this this went but i just want to say thank you for watching this video if you've made it to the end then congratulations the first episode will be in the description of the video so please do give that a listen or a watch however you want to say it, and I will see you guys on my next video. This is Skimboot, signing out.